Have you ever wondered what part of your brain allows you to sleep? What allows you to remember or what allows you to feel anything? That part is the neocortex. The neocortex or isocortex makes up 90 to 92% of the cortical surface and the rest is made by the allocortex. The neocortex is responsible for higher order functions such as sensory perception, generation of motor commands and language. It's organized into horizontal layers and vertical columns, termed cortical columns, although in this video the focus will primarily be on the layers. There are six layers in the neocortex, numbered from superficial to deep. However, the thickness, layering, and composition of these layers varies from lobe to lobe. The neurons in the neocortex can be broadly divided based on their projection targets into local circuit and long distance neurons, where local circuit neurons relay information within the neocortex, while long distance neurons send information to other parts of the brain. The first layer is known as the molecular layer and consists of very few actual neurons and is mostly made up of apical dendrites, dendrites that emerge from the apex of a pyramidal neuron, which is a type of multipolar neuron a neuron with one axon and many dendrites. The molecular layer also is comprised of parallel fibers, which are parallel running axons that emerge from granular cells in the second layer. The second layer is the external granular layer, and is mostly comprised of densely packed pyramidal cells and smaller neurons known as granular cells. Layer 3 is the pyramidal layer, and contains many medium-sized pyramidal cells. The pyramidal cells in this layer are mostly long-distance neurons because they send axonal projections to other parts of the brain. The fourth layer is named the internal granular layer due to its small pyramidal and granular cells. This layer also receives massive axonal projections from the thalamus. Due to this, layer 4 is very thick in areas that receive considerable thalamic input such as the primary, secondary, and associative sensory areas. However, this layer is relatively thin in the respective motor cortex areas as they don't receive a lot of thalamic input. The cells in this layer are predominantly local circuit and project the thalamic information they receive to adjacent neurons for additional processing. Layer 5 is the ganglionic layer and is comprised of large pyramidal cells including in the motor cortex the giant cells of Betz. The neurons in this layer are long distance neurons and they're the source of descending axons, which form many pathways such as the cortical spinal pathway which goes through the posterior limb of the internal capsule around the thalamus and the pons in the brainstem. The pathway splits and crosses over to the contralateral or opposite side in a process called decussation at the pyramids of the medulla. Approximately 90% of the fibers decussate here to form the lateral corticospinal tract, while the rest of the fibers continue down and form the anterior corticospinal tract. Pathways such as the corticospinal are responsible for fabricating motor output. This is done when the upper motor neuron communicates with the lower motor neurons in the spinal cord. The lower motor neuron then is responsible for sending the signal to a muscle. Along with being a major output layer, layer 5 is also an important input layer as it also receives direct thalmocortical input. The deepest layer, layer 6, is called the multiform layer and contains many different types of cells which are all local circuit. And that's it for the layers of the neocortex. Although we think we know a lot about it, there's a lot more to find out. But for now, thanks for watching.